You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. If it weren't for you, well, we wouldn't be here. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and you're absolutely right. And this is episode 856. Some of you have been with us since episode number one, which just, it blows my mind. So thankful, so humbled. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the questions. Keep them coming. Ask Grown You. <laughs> did I say grown? You did. Ask DroneU.com. We'd love to hear from you right now. Get on there. Go do it. If you have a question, send it in. Business questions today. Kind of, sort of business related in terms of how to reach a certain market that this particular caller is interested in. I presume, I don't think he's asking generally, I think it's something that he's interested in. And I think it's probably something the lot of you are interested in because there's something that you can do all across the country, with these kinds of companies. So, Yeah, definitely. Very interested to uh, pay close attention to this question, guys, and you'll pick up on something that I'm not going to talk about. But uh, no, I don't think this is the one that you're thinking. About. I think it is. Actually. Oh, it is. I think it is. I'm not going to say what it is. Okay. The, well, I'm curious. What, if it's not this question, then it's one of the next couple, and you're gonna listen to the question and go, "Wait a minute." <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if this is the one. Okay. Not, either way, we're answering this question on this show. Hey guys, love the podcast. Shane here from Southern New Mexico, and you asked for more business questions, so here's a multi-parter. First, when you go to pitch your services to a construction company, what are the things you want to show them? like the deliverables, et cetera. And what if you're just getting started and really don't have a portfolio yet? Secondly, who is a person you want to talk to at these companies? Like if you call them, who do you ask for? Is it the project manager or someone else? Thanks again, and I look forward to more podcasts. Awesome, Shane, so do we. And glad that you have joined us. And so you want to do work for construction companies there's probably actually quite a few deliverables that you can offer to a construction company I would yeah there are significant right? deliverables and the deliverables can differ between construction companies it's not always True. like one particular deliverable some people can be going just after marketing stuff some people can be looking at um, they want a 3d model some people actually want a 3d model and you to provide the pix 4d file so that if they want to inspect a certain area of that model they can click the individual photo and blow it up 10x so they can see what they're looking at. I mean, there there's a lot of different deliverables. Everything from radiometric thermography mapping to mapping to orthomosaics for measurements to volumetric measurements with things like uh, you know Pix40 drone deploy. Um, there is so much. And oftentimes it's very difficult to gauge what they're interested in. I mean, I've run into, uh, for example, the last uh, big company that we trained was a construction firm. And... Um, the CEO had absolutely no idea why this was valuable at all. It had just come from the investors that the investors wanted marketing pictures and permanent record of installation. That was it. Mm -hmm. When I told them that they can actually measure volumetrically, that they can measure um, you know, laterally as well, everyone's ears perked up in the room. And that's when I showed them my construction presentation. Um, I think that you've actually seen it before, but it's a 15 minute long presentation. And it goes through everything that construction company could use as a deliverable. So I talk about the history of drones. Actually, I think the most recent one was a roofing one. I talk about the history of drones. Um, I talk about, you know, I educate them on what the initial uses of drones were. Um, then I kind of talk about, as I'm watching this right now, see drone history. We show Fort Huachuca, Arizona, show examples of imagery in construction right now, solar panels. Uh, that was a roofing inspection I did in 2012. Mm. 2012 with a GoPro and a Phantom 2. And I got 150 bucks for that. <laughs> Big bucks. <laughs> Big bucks. So long story short, there's a lot that um, you can do. Then I talk about pilot requirements, what a pilot has to do to fly legally. I think that's really important. And then I discuss judging flight skill. And I show the same motions of a drone pilot uh, three different ways, a very simple version, a more advanced version, and then a version that utilizes all the flight services of the drone to create an 
buttery, silky smooth perspective that makes sense to the eye more than the other two perspectives. So when I do that, um, I show them, I say, hey, you know, notice the difference? And I show them those three clips again. And I mean, Rob can sit here and uh, hopefully it'll play. So this is the first clip. I remember this. What yeah, just happened? very simple. Yeah. Just right through the trees, up to reveal big vista in Colorado Springs. Second one, good drone, vista, tilt down. Okay, but the next one, we're going to fly through the trees. We're going to roll left. We're going to yaw right and tilt the camera down. So it creates this nice, like, as if it were a natural motion as a human looking over the edge, like, whoa, that's really high up. Yeah. You know, and that shows. Drops. Yeah, that shows so much better. Mm -hmm. So then people go, oh, like, oh, I can see the smoothness in shots now. Like, oh, man, that makes sense. So this is all so important. And I was really thinking about some of the things I've been saying about educating our clients in that book, How to Be a Rainmaker. Educating clients with this presentation is how I've gotten a lot of trainings. I've and by about. the way, this it's really important to know. So the question was specifically saying, I want to go talk to a construction company. Who do I talk to there? And, you know, certainly project managers. I mean, anybody that you know in that construction company is a good gateway or a good door to go through. So, you know, that question's tough to answer. It's based on relationships. But what's interesting about this is you actually did this to, like, a construction industry group, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's the answer because you're going to have several construction companies there. Yep. That's, and that's what you want to do. That's the best, 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 best way to sell ever because now the onus is on them. They're competing. As soon as one person is interested, the next person goes, oh, Bradbury Stam is interested and they're like number two. So if we don't get on the bandwagon, where are we going to be in three years? So you're That's so now, very real that keeping up with the Jones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. I love it, too. <laughs> it's a, yeah, the perception is reality. Up. Oh, yeah. You know, and just and that's why sometimes I drop names like, oh, well, you know, we worked with blah, 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 blah. And our construction uh, instructor worked for Amazon and Ikea, you know, and they're like, what? You know, so. <laughs> so talk about this particular group that you were in front of, who they well, were. Well, let me, do, let me, before I go into that, I just want to say the last couple things were in this video. Um, and I can put this up in the Facebook group. So if you're a Drone You member, you'll be able to see this video. I did take clips from other videos and just stack it together because sometimes Pix4D does a much better job explaining of how ortho mosaics work than I do. Hey, look, it's your house. Yeah, I put that in there. I remember you showing me <laughs> trying to make me feel bad about all the leaks. <laughs> so we also showcase thermal radiometric 3D meshes. So if they're trying to see issues with, um, if they're doing anything that's lead or, um, what is lead for those that, that don't know? Um, lead building. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't know what it stands for. I mean, it's environmental environmentally advanced I guess you'd say it's uh, it's high efficiency and so it's a certification that uh, that a building can get but what, I don't remember what the what, what the is the I know I'm trying to remember myself leadership and energy and environmental design so if you're trying to get a lead certification the radiometric thermography maps are really powerful for doing that then I show them you know photogrammetry benefits I show them that old video that I did for TrackMan about measuring points and places and interference and creating models and then I show how to use inspections with zoom so if they have bad pilots and they want to fly from super high up they can still you know get zoom then I talk about drone you a little bit and just the classes that we have and end with that so cool. yeah so I think that leads us to the question about uh, which association yeah go, yeah. go with that so um, recently I actually did this for the American Association of General Contractors and then did an, uh, an association for the uh, roofing inspectors of America I forget what it was and by the way there's a lot more of those kinds of groups than and, you realize oh yeah there's a there lot so but again you know you want to do your due diligence and a couple of these people were members of drone you and they're like please come speak for us and if it's local I typically do it for free um, because it's also lead generation for drone you um, and I mean you know people do charge for these things but I don't think a majority of our listenership is there to charge for these think of these as a fantastic way to generate leads but here's the thing guys you can get people super excited but if you don't follow up afterwards, you're going to lose all all interest. So if you do do an association talk, you show a video on all these different things, then what you should do after that is follow up, set coffee, do a demo, okay? 
and then get get your your foot in the door. In fact, it reminds me our last construction class that we did. They want me to go back out there and show them some basic mapping. Mm-hmm. They want to do a mapping training here. Cool. So anyway, well, yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it certainly there is a domino effect to these things as they get comfortable with one vertical or one use of the drones in their company, they're going to want to know, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. How can we use it beyond that? But he asked about, what if I don't have a reel yet? And what I would say to that is no excuse to try to get into this without having a reel. Yeah. Why aren't you out there just filming the things that you want to work in anyway? Why aren't, and getting better at it, better at it, better at it. I mean, we just heard Gary V. Um, I, you know, I've really loved how he's kind of become more humble as well. It's good leadership for me. Um, but one of the things that he said is that, you know, you are only as good as your last interaction. You're only as good as your last up to bat. You're only as good as your last job. And if you go out there and you get some sample data for, you know, doing these inspections or working in construction or doing these things, do it over and over again. Offer to work with someone for free because you want to do discovery and you want information from them on what's important. What data are they looking at? What matters to them? All of those things are just critical in really understanding what the client desires. And remember, dig down, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, because you really need to figure out what is the black swan? What are they really after? And I hate clients who try to, and I've had one of these, who try to be deceptive in what they're trying to figure out because they're secretly they're secretly paying you because with the intent of them learning from you to do it themselves. I've had a couple of those. Hmm. And those people are always evident because at the end of the job, they're like, can you just send me the original photos? And I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> That's typically how my email response Hopefully goes. Hopefully what you would say is, well, as you'll notice in the contract, right? That's not what we agreed to or something along those lines. But anyways, um, Shane, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in that space. And it's just a matter of figuring out kind of the kind of construction companies that you want to work with or who do you know? Um, what does your circle of influence include as far as people that are involved in that industry? Um, you'd be surprised at who your gateway into that particular company can be. Um, it can be one of the construction workers who knows you well and is willing to speak highly of you and does a good job for the company and and just kind of gets the thinking going with somebody who's a decision maker in the company. So, and ultimately, if you're going to go after a specific construction company and not go this route, which number one, I think at a minimum do both, but yes, project managers, you can go ask and you can ask for the office manager, somebody who kind of has an idea of what's going on in the entire company. Um, various people that you can talk to. And if you don't get the answer from the person that you try first, try somebody else. Don't give up. Don't give up. Persistence. I mean, I'm going to read this just one more time. And I'm going to end the show with this quote. So thank you guys for listening very much. Um, By the way, I love reading your new reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're listening on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or Overcast, please leave us a review. Uh, we, We really, really appreciate it. But anyway, um, on, on the bombshell of ending the class, this is what I finish every email with. Nothing in this world can take place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated failures. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. President Calvin Coolidge. Hmm. Yeah, well said. Thanks, guys, for listening.